I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. It's that time of the day again, time for a look at what's up, what's happening out in the tropics. And we do have a couple of things going on. In fact, we've still got a tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico and another disturbance in the Eastern Pacific that could get going over the next few days. So let's get right to it. Fortunately, no hurricanes to talk about, but we do still have tropical storm Carl in the Southern Gulf of Mexico. It's still out there churning kind of me in it's not really going anywhere quickly. It's moving very slowly, but the good news is that it is expected to make a turn away from us. So I don't think it's headed towards Southeast Texas, but we are going to have to monitor it because it could have some big impacts to parts of Mexico. We also have another disturbance. This one is kind of hugging the western Mexican coast, but it could potentially develop out in the eastern Pacific, so we'll be watching that one as well. So these are the two systems that we are monitoring at this point. But of course, let's talk about the tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico, because that is the one that could have some bigger impacts over the next two to five days. We've got the potential for this to get a little stronger. And in fact, it has gotten stronger as we've gone through the last several hours. Notice that it is becoming more symmetrical. You could see those big bright colors there indicating some of those thunderstorms within this and it is expected to gradually make a shift to the south so it is going to be moving away from us there's actually an upper ridge of high pressure that will likely start to steer it to the south and eventually the southwest so that's why we're not expecting it to head here then there's also a cold front that will be rolling into southeast texas this evening and tonight and that will help to kind of keep it out of the area keep it down south. So I don't think it's heading towards Texas, but we could have a higher risk of rip currents from it. And we also could get a little bit of that tropical moisture heading our way as we go into the next couple of days. Here's the track, at least what our spaghetti model, computer model tracks are showing. And they're kind of all over the place, but the majority of them do take it south or either west. So we've got one that tries to bring it off to the north and then another that takes it west and then north over Mexico. But the majority of the models do take it south into portions of southeastern Mexico for that landfall likely late in the work week. Landfall likely will be very close to Veracruz in Mexico. So we're going to be monitoring that area for the potential for some heavy rain that could lead to some flooding. All right, here's what you want to see the latest track for tropical storm Carl and we've got some stronger winds in this. We've got maximum sustained winds around 60 miles per hour, but of course you can still have wind gusts higher than that. So we're talking about borderline damaging wind in this system now. So that means there could be some tree limbs or trees blown down some power lines blown down. And of course, the threat for several inches of rain as this makes a beeline to Mexico in the next couple of days. Movement very slow right now and nothing really helping to kick it along. We've got movement only at two miles per hour and its movement is off to the north. And we've got pressure right around 1002 millibars. So this is the latest advisory, the 4 p.m. advisory. And notice it is slowly but surely drifting to the north now, but it will start to curve back down to the south and then the southwest. So let's talk about the track. At this point, the official track or forecast from this from the National Hurricane Center has it remaining at around 60 miles per hour around 1 p.m. Thursday. So that's a pretty decent, pretty potent tropical storm. Then as we go into Friday afternoon, winds decrease a little bit. It should decrease to about 50 miles per hour for those maximum sustained winds. It's expected to kind of run into unfavorable environment out there. So more sheer, a more unfavorable environment will mean some slight weakening could be possible over the next couple of days. Then by Saturday, it's getting close to making landfall early Saturday morning, and it should start to push on to the southeastern Mexican coast by then, likely as a weaker tropical storm with winds around 45 miles per hour. Then it is back down to a tropical depression as it weakens over the mountainous terrain of Mexico by Sunday. And we will continue with that threat for potentially several inches of rain with this. And we'll have that threat for some flooding, maybe some mudslides for parts of Mexico, but no direct impacts here, thank goodness. Sea surface temps out there are still on the warm side. We've got widespread temps in the 80s as we check out some of these buoys across the Caribbean for the majority of the Gulf of Mexico. 
So that is water that is still warm enough to help to strengthen and to help to fuel this tropical system, this tropical storm. So it's something we'll be monitoring closely. I don't really see any major changes in the forecast or any major changes in the atmosphere that would start to steer that system over into our area. So we'll keep watching it, but I think we will not have to deal with a direct impact from that one. All right, I want to switch gears and head over into the Eastern Pacific. Now this is another system that we've been monitoring. This one has about a 10 to 20% chance for development. Now, if you remember over the last few days, I told you kind of the origins of this. We did have Julia, which at one point was a hurricane, then it was a tropical storm, then a tropical depression, and then it just completely fell apart. But there was a little chunk of it that kind of broke off and it moved out over the Eastern Pacific. So it combined with another little trough. And this is why we have this disturbance that we're monitoring. So now it is back over the water of the Eastern Pacific and it does have a chance to develop. That chance is quite low. In fact, only a 10% chance to develop into a tropical cyclone over the next 48 hours and about a 20% shot that we may get a tropical depression or a tropical storm from this over the next five days. Right now it's kind of just hugging the western Mexican coast and its movement will continue to be off to the west northwest. So we'll watch that one and see what happens with it. But if we do get it to develop, that next name would be Rosalind. If we do get any additional development in the Atlantic Basin, the next name on the list after Carl would be Lisa, then Martin, then Nicole. But we're hoping, we're keeping our fingers crossed, that we don't get that far down the list. Hopefully things will start to simmer down and settle down across the tropics over the next few weeks and over the next month. Of course, in the Pacific Basin, if we get another name system, as I just mentioned, if we get that disturbance that I just showed you to develop into a tropical cyclone, that next name would be Rosalind. Well, how much longer are we going to have to deal with this? Well, thank goodness we are past the peak of hurricane season, which was right around September 10th, but we are still in Hurricane season officially, it does not end until November 30th, and we are getting close to being in the middle of October, so we've still got a ways to go. We've got a few more weeks in October, and we've got all of November. Now notice, historically, our chance for tropical cyclones, hurricanes, tropical storms, tropical depressions really starts to fall after the middle of October. We can't rule it out completely, but the chance for it happening and moving here much, much lower, but still don't let your guard down. We're going to keep updating you daily as we go through the remainder of this hurricane season because you never know. Crazier things have happened and we could still have some tropical systems heading our way. But right now we are looking good. We do have a few cold fronts headed our way, but it does not appear that we've got any major tropical storms or hurricanes or anything like that headed to southeast Texas. Of course, if that changes or if you just want to know what's going on with the tropics in more detail or if you want to know your local weather forecast, make sure that you have our Fox 26 weather app downloaded. It is a very cool thing to have on your phone because weather impacts everybody and you never know when one of those heavy downpours could pop up or when we could have other types of severe weather. So make sure you stay in the know and make sure that you have a way to track whatever pops up on our radar. So just go to the app store if you can if you haven't already and download the Fox 26 weather app. You'll be glad you did, especially when the weather turns a little crazy and we all know eventually it will. Also, you can keep track of me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Ramesha Shade TV on Twitter, Facebook, Ramesha Shade Weather and Instagram at Ramesha Shade. I hope you have a great evening. Stay safe out there and enjoy the rest of your day.